Good evening. It is 8.07, which is a weird time to start a hangout, but I'm weird. This is the second listen today um, on making a wooden model steam locomotive. And I have to change the one I have got called up here because that's not steam loco too. Um, I wonder where the other one went. Oh, don't tell me I didn't save it. Ballistic and embarrassing. Yeah, there it is. That was really strange. It didn't... That's because I have two versions of up open. It doesn't like that. No. That's why I couldn't find it. So, um, earlier today I said this is going to be a scale model. Well, it's going to be a tiny model. <laughs> scale model gives some sort of an idea. It's going to be like 148 or 1 to 100 or something. Um... That gives you some idea. Yeah, that has to be based on an idea that you know how big it was in the first place. The only thing I am relatively sure of is the rails are four feet eight inches apart. But I don't know if that's four feet eight inches to the center, to the inside, or to the outside. So I still don't know anything. I also, just as I was thinking a few minutes ago, I don't know how wide I could make these based on my current model because I don't know how long the, uh, the ties, cross ties, I guess you might call them, the big square wooden things that the rails are set on, I don't know how long they are so that how close the next train passing would be. Um, about that smart, you know, about that ignorant, but I like modeling. And so we can have fun. And here we go. I am going to change over to um, screen share. Poke the button. And here it is. Here's what we left off with today. I'm going to take all of this stuff and try to move it up so that one of these rear wheels is sitting on my absolute origin, or at least close to it. That way I can move um, my truck down. I can go ahead and make my undercarriage here, and we can start on the... Uh, boiler part and also the boiler cradles. These are not going to be like you would see on a normal steam locomotive. They're just going to be something to hold parts together. I want to take this. I want to use my view and I can see that my outside, my, my driver wheels are not quite right. That's a front view. Okay. Let's do this view. I want to drag this down, unremove, until it sort of looks like it's setting on the, the red origin. Now let's go over here and find out why these wheels are in the wrong spot. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my move, I'm going to just drag these things out and then try to find a center of my component in point center. I'll go up here and try to find the center of this one too. There. No, they should be the same. Now I'm going to take them and move them in. 
kind of eyeballed. Move my outliner up so I can get another view. Um, not back. Okay, those still need to move inboard a little bit. Only to make them kind of line up with the front truck. Um, they can be finessed later. I am going to go in and make all these um, axles shorter, though. If there are any train modelers in my viewing audience, um, if you see anything that I should know or should do differently, please tell me. Um, I know I'm doing a lot of things that may not make any sense. Um, I, I know how to do them myself, and that's as good as it gets. Now I'm going to I'm going to select each of these mouse button one and I'm going to hide all those and I'm going to look at the bottom of this and I'm going to create a rectangle eight and a quarter by two and a quarter. I will live with that for the time being. Now that is active. I'm going to shift C to create a component. Make that component active and I'm going to extrude that component down some. Now I want to turn some things back on. Unhide. That's not low enough, but let's see what the front trucks are doing to me here. Um, okay. I need to make this one active. I need to put a line across it. And midpoint's good enough for what I'm doing because, except I didn't grab the midpoint. I wasn't in my, um, I wasn't in the right spot to create a line. I keep harping at everybody to make sure you look over here and find out if you're right in the right component to work on, and I keep not doing it. Now I'm going to pull this one down. So I can at least entrap my axle. And I can see that I am way too wide. So I'll take this face and move it in. And I'll take this face and move it the same amount. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't make a difference. The leap is moved. Now I've got to move this one up so that my front trucks can turn. I might put a washer, I may go back in and pull this down a little bit later, but right now this needs to be able to, to turn sideways and it couldn't before. Um, unhide this. I'm going to move these axles rearward a little bit farther. I'm not going to put the holes through the um, frame yet because I may have to do some other strange things here in a little bit. Oops, stay up there. There. Now, I'm going to call up my other loco that I had up before. Yes, please save them. Now, here's what I was talking about. Um, I know this is wrong on this one. I'll have to fix it because I need two big objects on top of it. I need one of them as a smokestack, and I need another one as a big light. This is merely a big disc, long disc, cylinder. 
But we also, a little bit later, get into making this push linkage. Um, granted, there's nothing to connect this to the steam to make it work, but at least since it's connected to the drivers back here, this will go back and forth as you push, or your, your grandkids, push the uh, train around the, the Christmas tree. On this one, I created the top arched. Um, I will call up the whole train that I've done. And most of them I'm going to make with peaked roofs. Um, I think arched roofs are better. I think they're prettier. And they're also a lot harder for me to make in a shop. So I'm going to make it easy for me to do. I do not have a lathe, although one of my buddies, Izzy Swan, if I went to his site, by the way, he's good. If you go to Izzy's site, he has all sorts of, and I need to shift because you need to see my facial expressions on this one. Turn screen share off. There. Izzy is a jig fixture making genius when it, <laughs> when it comes to making stuff on wood. Um, he has done bowling balls with a circular saw, bowling pins with a circular saw. The guy is phenomenal. Um, I've chatted with him a couple of times here. I saw, I sent him a model I did. Um, he hasn't responded back yet. If he had here, if if you guys are hearing him say, "Hey, Izzy, how about the pallet popper?" He might get on it and and, and actually look at it. That, by the way, he calls it a pallet pallet pal. Um, it is a couple of big pieces of wood and a hunk of rope tied together. I'm not going to go into everything, but to, to salvage um, pallets, skids. Um, you see people cut them off, you have, um, pry them out with uh, pry bars and hammer them apart. Well, this is really slick. You slide, it's got two prongs and a handle. You slide the two prongs under, you push the handle down, and it just pops the, the nails right out. Just lifts the whole board up on one side. Brilliant idea. I like Izzy. Okay, back to, back to screen share. I keep forgetting to hit the other button. All right. Um, let's go back to Steam Loco 2. So now I want to create a boiler cylinder. SketchUp only works on the XY plane um, or in their nomenclature red and green. Everything blue is positive Z so anything you're working on unless you modify the axis location has to be done on the red green. So I'm just going to go ahead and make um, one point seven five radius circle. Might be too big, might not. Okay. Double click to get it all. Shift C to make a component. And now I have my component. I'll make that active and I will extrude it blue. Let's go seven inches. Probably going to be too long, but that's okay. It might also be too big around. So now I need to rotate that. So I mouse, mouse button one, and I'm just going to click over here to get a point to rotate it around. Point lever went 90 degrees. That's what I wanted. Now I will select that part again. Mouse button one. Grab my move tool. Grab an endpoint and plunk it on the middle. That's a pretty good size boiler. I think I'm going to change the size. That just tells me where it's at. So to do this, I need to 
select that component, and I did it in the outliner to make sure I got it, go into scale, red, green, and again, you'll notice down below in the red, green scale, it, it is real hard to get it to move the same amount dragging a mouse around on a table. So I'm going to try 0.7 on each axis, make it 70%. And I'm going to spacebar to clear it out. Double mouse click, mouse button one, put a dimension on here. Um, I don't like that dimension, although with a, if you happen to have a um, lathe, you can make it that weird dimension. So I will go back to scale. I'll do 0.7 again on both of them. That's too small. Let's go 0.85, comma 0.85. 2 and 5 64. That's still weird. I'll keep it. And I'm going to shorten this up, make it active, grab my push pull tool, and move it in an inch and a quarter. It's spacebar a few times, clear everything out, grab that one again. And I'm going to move it again from the endpoint to the center. And I'm going to move it up from that midpoint straight up. Now, we need to have some cradles. So I'm going to come clear everything out and get a new um, work area here. And I will make a rectangle um, 0.625, and I will make it 2.5. Double mouse button 1, Shift C, Create, and extrude this up. Let's make it 5 eighths also. Now, I'm going to move this over onto the front of my loco frame, if I can get it to move to the front. There it is. And that looks kind of sweet, except, you know, it ain't going to fit. So, there's actually two ways we can do this. Um, I'll show you the less accurate way first. It's enough to kill a lot of birds with one stone, but I won't be doing it here because I want to show you the better way. Okay, there, and I, what I have is I've got an arc, and you can see it's not like I'm grabbing things. And I can come down here, and it sort of goes um, tangent, maybe. You can see that it looks ugly, so we won't do that. Control-Z, get rid of it. I'm going to take these two parts, Mouse click one on both of them. I'm going to select edit and intersect faces with model. Actually, I'm going to end up having to do the same thing. Let's hide this one because these arcs are not where I want them. So let's undo this. Control Z, Control Z, uh, Control Y, put that one back in there. What I'm going to do is Temporarily, I'm going to take component 10 and make it part of component 11. Now when I select this and when I make this active and select that, we should get a different result. Um, intersect faces, and it's still saying with model, so we'll see what we're getting. Now, go back here, mouse button 1, let's hide it. But we actually have a legitimate face. Um, that's one nice thing about using um, the outliner here. You can manipulate the positions of your 
um, geometry so that you can get multiple things done. Now that's an ugly circle. Um, I would have had to change the number of faces it creates. Right now it's not that big a deal because it's going to be cut with a bandsaw or a saber saw and it'll look like it looks anyway, besides that it's going to be set on. Okay, there I have component 11 again. I want to move this aft. Let's move it to and somebody quick tell me what 2464 is. 1230 seconds. My headphones are falling off. 2.3125. Now, I've got one of them. I want to do two of them. So while it's still highlighted, type in 2x. You can see down in the lower left-hand corner, there's 2x there. Hit enter again. And we have three saddles, cradles, whatever you want to call them. Now, I'm going to take all three of them and move them a little bit aft because I really don't like this one sitting right on the front. It's okay. I just don't like it. Okay. Select that. Select a point to start from. And that looks better. Now, I think that um, the cone that I have on my other one looks very nice. So I'm going to go ahead and make this active. And I'm going to make this and this a group. Shift G. Now on this group, I think I can bring it out. Push pull, bring it out, bring it out three quarters of an inch. And you say, That doesn't look very pointy. Gotcha. You're right. I'm going to make this face active. I'm going to go into my scale tool again and if I just do this, it makes it kind of a swoopy point, which is cute, but not what I want. So I'll just pop the control key while I'm here and make it 25% smaller. Whoops, too much. Sometimes you got to look multiple places. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back in and try that again. There. Now I'm going to explode this group so that it unites with this this portion of the model. If I go out of it, select something else, go back in, that all highlights. So I want to do the same thing here. Shift G. Make that active. Extrude it out. I'm going to extrude this one longer. Um, now I'm going to make it the same because I'll make the front end shorter. Space bar, click outside of it, make this active again, select this face, go back into scale, hold the button, and just make it somewhat smaller. Now I'm going to explode that one again. But this one, I think I've shot myself in the foot. Let's find out. If I go to push-pull that one, it recognizes it as an entire face. 
get the escape key, space button a couple times. Now, let's see what happens if I push pull that. Aha! It releases. I can't do it. So let's go get that again and go back into scale. There, I should have just changed it to 3 8 So that, that looks a little bit better. Save this thing again. Now let's make some, well, let's work on the, um, the cab. I need to extend this one rearward somewhat. And this one too. Now, kind of looking straight down on top of this, we're going to go ahead and create a rectangle from that corner to there. And why it overlapped, I have no idea because I was trying to be dead on it. Shift C. And now I'm going to make that active and I'm going to extrude this up. Maybe too high, maybe not. But at least we have something. And I'm also going to put, oops, escape, select that face, move that one. I'm going to move this one out somewhat and I'm going to move this one out also and even though they're not the same I can tweak them later tweak is one of them engineering terms is very technical in other words ain't right now but I'll fix it when I get to it now I moved these out because if the if the engineer and the fireman and I don't know if the brakeman rides up there the engineer and fireman do if they don't have something to see past this big boiler here. They'll run into things. So they stick out farther in a little window here and we'll get to that. So I want to have um, a wall for this cab. So I'm going to go into offset, make that part active so I can offset it, grab that line, Move it in 0.125. And I need to push this in a ways, but I don't want it to get so far in that it pierces through the other side. There. Now we have a compartment that we can work on. Um, and you can tell that my voice is beginning to go bad again because I've been outside today working in my shop and my asthma is kicking in. But I am going to make the lantern for the front before we leave. Um, 0.75, Shift C create and make that active bring it up and now I'm going to make another group here because I want to no I know what I'm going to do I'm just going to make a little series of lines around this thing um, Let's go in and try to create here a 
and it's not going to let me. Okay, line function, my hotkey L, from here to here to here to here, here to here, and I'll get the closer there. Now this, I want to pull up a little bit farther, and then I'm going to spread it out a little bit. So up, that'll work. Escape, there, thank you. Scale. Same thing, I want it uniform around the center. And I want to take this one and I want to move it up for the lighthouse itself. Shift G for make a group. I want to try something different here. It might not work, but hang with me. I want to take this without the group. I want to select this and move it and push pull it up. And then explode this group. And we'll see what happens. May not let me do it because of the way it's setting. Explode. Now, see, I have faces here, just like I have down here. So I can select, says so another place that group come in handy. Um, if I'd have thought of that before, I could have done it down here. Um, when I was teaching at Oakland, I would have, I just tell everybody at the beginning of the class, if I demonstrate something at one console, Somebody else asked me essentially the same question two minutes later or ten minutes later. Pay attention because I might do it a different way. Not that one way is better than the other. It's just what happens to come to my mind at the time. If it works, it works. Don't fight it. Go back to scale. Grab this corner. And I'm going to move this one in. Well, maybe I won't. A bit farther. Now there's something else that's supposed to be on that lighthouse and I can't remember so let's um, drag a new tab over here and I'm going to search for steam engines again or steam locomotive because if I search for engine um, I'll also get traction engines Okay, images. Well, we also need a bell, but I don't have that. This one has just a regular light on it. I'm looking for an older one. Here's an older one. Um, that looks like where they put... I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just um pretty. Um, this and this are part of the control mechanisms for the engine, I believe. I'm not going to put that on, and I'm probably not going to put the bell on either. Tomorrow, we will um, go ahead and um, do the pilot, and we'll do the connecting linkages for the wheels, and we'll finish the smokestack. Thanks for listening. I hope you have had a good time tonight. I have to find where my where I'm talking at. That didn't pop up. Um, there I am. Hot dog. I'll turn off screen share. That's a, that's a pretty paint job on that engine. A lot of brass. Um, just very, very nice. I can't read what it, what's on the um, tender, though. This one looks like it's a wood-fired one. 
And here I am again. Thank you for joining me. Whether you have done it actively or whether you catch it on uh, Google Plus, Wood Worlds, or um, YouTube, I appreciate that. Please go to my I Sketch If You Can Too site and give it a like. I'm trying to get to um, 50, I think. It gives me more activity that I can do on my site. Catch you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.